Hey guys, Andy here with Greenbelt Academy, and I am so incredibly excited for today's video. I want to share with you the 10 most important topics on the Greenbelt exam. If you're going to be successful on the Greenbelt exam, and if you're going to be successful professionally as a Greenbelt, these 10 topics are absolutely must know topics. All right, let's hit over the computer and get started. All right, let's take a look at today's agenda. So I, I really quick, before we get into the actual top 10 topics, I want to refresh on this idea of the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule. It's essentially this idea of unequal distributions. And it's this idea that there are oftentimes situations where there are a vital few concepts or topics that end up being really, really important. And that's what this whole lecture is founded on is this idea that there are a critical few topics that you absolutely have to know to both be successful on the exam, but also to be an effective greenbelt and an effective continuous improvement professional in real life. The next thing I want to do is I want to start with a high level kind of exam breakdown. There are six pillars in the greenbelt body of knowledge, how many chapters there are and how many on average questions you might expect from every single chapter. And then I want to get into the, the specific topics themselves. Again, I think that there are 10 topics that are absolutely critical for your success, both in the Greenbelt exam, but also as an effective Greenbelt, as an effective continuous improvement professional in real life. So I want to go over those one by one. And then I want to share a resource with you. This video is only intended to introduce what those 10 most important concepts are. For those of you who want to go on that journey to become a Greenbelt and you want to go deeper, I want to give you a free resource, an online course that you can sign up for for free to learn more about these top 10 topics and continue on that journey. Okay, let's get into this. Again, I want to start by just framing this whole conversation around the idea of the 80-20 rule. This was popularized by Joseph Duran, who essentially taught us this idea that, you know, in many situations in life, there are often a vital few things that drive the biggest portion of, of an outcome. And for you, that's the number of questions on the exam or that's being successful on exam day. And that's exactly this idea, right, that, that the Greenbelt Body of Knowledge has this 80-20 rule that there are a, a vital few topics that you absolutely have to know to be successful on exam day. And that's why I wanted to start here and just introduce this idea and frame the whole conversation around that 80-20 rule. The other thing I wanted to do real quickly before we get into the topics is just make sure you're, you totally understand how the Greenbelt Body of Knowledge is set up. There are six pillars in the Body of Knowledge. Overview, define, measure, analyze, and prove control. It's basically the DMAIC model plus a bit of an overview chapter here at the start. Now, on exam day, you're going to get 100 questions. And if you look at the body of knowledge, there are 24 individual topics or individual chapters that make up the body of knowledge. Now, on average, if you just said 100 questions spread out over 24 topics, you would assume that every chapter or every topic gets about four questions. The reason I do this math and I show you this is because I think this is actually the wrong approach. Again, it's this idea of the 80-20 rule. There are going to be a handful of topics or chapters or even just concepts within a chapter that are vitally critical for your success on the exam. And that's exactly what I want to show you today. The other thing I want to show you in terms of helping you prioritize your time and helping you focus and helping you be successful on exam day is understanding how these different pillars on the body of knowledge will actually show up on the exam. Now, I want to start by talking about two of them, the define and the measure phase of the body of knowledge. These pillars get 20 questions each, making them probably the two most important topics on the exam. Now, it also shouldn't surprise you that they have the most number of chapters. So all the other pillars, overview, analyze, improve, control, all have three chapters, right? You can see it here. Whereas the define and the measure pillars both have six individual chapters within them. Now, the other piece of math I wanted to do, because I think this highlights something incredibly important, is that if you take the number of questions and divide by the number of chapters, what you'll find here is that the analyze phase of the body of knowledge gets, on average, six questions per chapter. Now, again, I think this, this average mindset or this average perspective is probably not a good one because it doesn't align with the 80-20 rule. But what it does tell you is that the analyze pillar, which, which is mostly statistics, is going to draw a lot of questions per chapter. And so as you're preparing to, to get ready for the green belt exam, as you're creating, let, let's say, a study plan or whatever, you're going to want to spend a lot of your time in the analyze pillar as well as the define and measure pillars of the body of knowledge. Now, having said all this, right, like, like I mentioned, the 80-20 rule exists. There are 10 topics spread across these six pillars that are absolutely critical for your success on exam day. And let's start with number one. 
This is the normal distribution. This is so incredibly important, and let me explain why. So not only is the normal distribution going to draw questions in Chapter 12 when we talk about statistical distributions, but we also use the normal distribution when we talk about the central limit theorem, when we create confidence intervals, when we do hypothesis testing, when we're calculating process capability. This idea of the normal distribution is so foundational for many of the core concepts in Six Sigma that if you don't have a, a great understanding or a strong understanding of the normal distribution, you will not be successful on exam day. So make sure you, you understand the Z transformation, you understand how those Z values are calculated and looked up, and how they're, they're used to, to create things like confidence intervals and hypothesis testing, and how it all relates back to process capability. You must, must, must understand the normal distribution to be successful on exam day. And that's why the normal distribution is, is topic number one. Topic number two is Demaic. Demaic is the heart of Six Sigma. I know Six Sigma professionals love to talk about all of the tools and this tool and that tool. Demaic is the core fundamental process within Six Sigma. It is the scientific method. Define your problem, measure your problem, analyze your data, improve, make an improvement, right? Take that data, learn something, make an improvement, and then control that improvement over time. Demaic is such a critically important topic that if you don't have a strong understanding of it, you will struggle. I want to reiterate that, right, by just pointing out that the body of knowledge follows the Demaic structure, right? Everything about Six Sigma and becoming a green belt uses the Demaic formula. If you are going to be a continuous improvement professional and if you're going to solve problems and fix processes, you will be using Demaic, right? And so that's why, again, I think it's such a critically important topic on the body of knowledge. It's going to draw questions on the exam, but it's also going to be a really important tool that you need to use as a professional. The next tool is Lean. Now, obviously, it's called the Six Sigma Greenbelt Certification, but it should be called the Lean Six Sigma Greenbelt Certification because Lean is a huge concept in the body of knowledge. Now, there's a lot of Lean tools that you need to know to be successful on exam day. The reason I picked Waste as what I think is the, the most important Lean tool is because a lot of the other Lean concepts require that you have a fundamental understanding of Waste. The reason we do value stream mapping, the reason we use Kanbans, the reason we, we do SMED, all of those lean tools are meant to somehow address waste or improve flow. And again, that's why I think waste is such an important topic because it's, it's must know. It's foundational, right? It's foundational to the other lean topics that are on the exam. So you have to know the eight forms of waste. Again, I think it's really important for the exam. It's also a topic that you're going to use a lot as a continuous improvement professional, and you should have a strong understanding of it. The next tool is designed for Six Sigma. So Six Sigma was developed originally to address problems in existing processes. And along the way, somebody wisened up and said, hey, we need to start applying these Six Sigma tools and methodologies to the way we design new products and new processes. And that's where Design for Six Sigma was born. Now, on the exam, I think you're going to get four or five questions from this particular chapter. But the other reason that I think that this is critical is because if you took a survey of new students who were preparing for the Greenbelt exam and you asked them which topic they were the least familiar with, I think Design for Six Sigma is probably at the top of that list. Most of us are already familiar with Lean and with Demaic and Process Capability. I think a lot of people don't have a lot of experience with Design for Six Sigma. And that, for me, is why it's a critical topic, because it stumps a lot of students on the actual exam. So that's why it's number four. Number five is the seven QC tools. I'm such a huge fan of the QC tools. So not only do I think you're going to see these seven QC tools a lot on the exam, in fact, my prediction is, or what I expect is that you're going to get a single question on the exam for each of the seven tools, if, if not sometimes multiple questions for multiple tools. You know, I think you're going to get at least seven questions on the exam. These are must-know tools for real life. Right when I, when I created this list, this top ten list, I wasn't just thinking about the Greenbelt exam. It's also about which tools are you going to use in real life. And so, if you're trying to understand the root cause, or you're trying to fix a problem, or or improve a process, the seven QC tools are some of the most powerful ones out there. And that's why they made the list as number five, the the fifth most important topic. Number six is the seven management and planning tools. One thing I really like about the Greenbelt body of knowledge is that not only as continuous improvement professionals, not only do we identify the root cause, we have to address the problem through some sort of project or, or kappa. And that's what the seven management planning tools are. They're tools that help you get move the ball across the finish line, 
address the problem, make a change, implement a project. And that's really, really important for, for green belts. And, and again, similar to the seven QC tools, I think on the actual green belt exam, you're going to get one question for each of these seven management planning tools, making them absolutely must know tools on exam day. By the way, I have videos for the seven QC tools and the seven management planning tools and the normal distribution. I will link all that below in the description if you want to learn more, but yeah, the seven management planning tools are absolutely important on the exam. Number seven, process capability. There would not be Six Sigma without process capability. This idea of your Sigma level, right? The number of standard deviations that fit into your specification limit is simply just a fancy way of talking about process capability, right? You'll often see these tables that directly correlate your Sigma level to some sort of process capability value. These two ideas go hand in hand. It's a fundamental concept. You're gonna see a lot of questions on the exam calculations, conceptual questions, and it's just a core fundamental concept that all continuous improvement experts should have a strong understanding of, and that's why I added it to the list. Number eight is hypothesis testing. So I wanted to circle back to that, that first table I showed you where we broke down the, the actual exam, and I want to talk about the analyze pillar of the body of knowledge. There are three chapters in this pillar, exploratory data analysis, hypothesis testing, and additional analysis methods. Now, in total, what ASQ tells us is that there are 18 questions from this pillar. Now, when we did the math originally, what we said was is that there would be six questions from each chapter. Now, in truth, and this is just my opinion, here's what I think the actual breakdown is. Four questions from exploratory data analysis, four questions from additional analysis methods, and then 10 questions on the exam specific to hypothesis testing. Now, that might seem like a lot, but let me explain why. This is a really, really big chapter. ANOVA analysis, confidence intervals for things like the population mean value, the population standard deviation, the population proportion, hypothesis testing, contingency tables, and concepts like error and power and p-values. The hypothesis testing is truly a very big topic. The other reason that this topic made the list is if you think about DMAIC, it is fundamentally the scientific method. You form a hypothesis, and then you test that hypothesis to see if it's true or not. And that's why hypothesis testing is a big part of being a green belt and passing the green belt exam, because fundamentally that's what we're doing. We're following the scientific method and we're testing hypotheses along the way. Now, sticking with that same logic, if you're going to test a hypothesis, you need to know how to run a design experiment. And that's why DOE, I think, is another really important concept on the green belt exam. The other reason I think that you're going to see a lot of questions on the exam from this particular topic is that it is a big subject and there's a lot of important terms, factors, response variables, levels, treatments, error, main effects, interaction effects, randomization, blocking, replication. There are just so many important concepts and terms that you as a green belt have to know that I think you're going to see a lot of questions on the actual exam from design of experiments. Last but not least, statistical process control. Again, I, I want to use the kind of that Pareto principle mentality and show you how the control pillar of the body of knowledge is broken down for all of the three chapters within it. Statistical process control, sustaining improvements, and lean tools for process controls. What ASQ tells us is that this pillar in the body of knowledge will get 15 questions. Here's how I think they're broken out. I think statistical process control will draw on average seven questions on the actual Greenbelt exam. And it's, it's similar to hypothesis testing in that it is a really big topic. There's a lot of really important concepts and, and ideas within this particular chapter. Common and special cause variation, rational subgrouping, choosing the right control chart. How do you know which control chart you need to use? Variable data control charts like the X bar and R chart attribute data control charts like the U chart and the P chart and the C chart. And then ultimately, right after you've set up your control chart and you've got your control limits, how do you actually analyze a control chart to ultimately detect special cause and, and common cause variation? So there's just a lot here making it a really important concept on the Greenbelt exam and for you in real life as a continuous improvement professional. 
All right, that is it. The other thing I wanted to share is this free resource. So this video was, again, just meant to introduce those 10 most important topics on the Greenbelt exam, but I wanted to go even further. I wanted to give you more resources to help you on your journey to become a Greenbelt, and that's why I created this free course. It's called the Top 10 Topics on the Greenbelt exam. Go to greenbeltacademy.com slash free course. What I did here is I took the most important lecture from the most important topics on the Greenbelt exam, and I give them to you for free. You get a video lecture, you get practice exams, you get cheat sheets, exam day guides, quiz stuff, downloadable PDFs, everything you need to learn, these top 10 topics on the Greenbelt exam is all in that free course. Go check that out. And do me a favor, if you love this video and you found it helpful and you thought it helped you on your journey, hit that like button. I want to help as many people as possible, and I want to help green belts on their journey to become, a, you know, a certified green belt. And so, when you hit that like button, it really helps me find more people and help more people. And you'd be doing me a huge favor, and I'm and I'm really grateful. Again, that's it for me. I hope you loved it, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye.